So this is the letter. It says, respectfully, I am aware of a resolution passed by Parliament at a sitting on Friday, 29th October 2021. In these terms, the General Legal Council is hereby directed to proceed and admit all students who passed in accordance with the advertised rules of the examinations. What does that, what does that mean? It's an allegation here by Parliament that the General Legal Council has advertised certain rules and that people had passed according to those rules and so they should be admitted. Even if that were so, and the General Legal Council does not admit them, a resolution of Parliament will not suffice. It is an action by the court. It is the court that can order the General Legal Council that based on your advertising, and the court can only do so upon an application by an affected person. That's, 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 how, that's how it works. It works like that. It's work like that. I've been covering the Ghanaian Constitution for a very long time. That's how it works. So people who observe that, oh, wait a minute, according to the advertised criteria for the examination, persons A, B, C, D must have passed. Why is it that the General Legal Council says they failed? Because clearly they passed. When you take that position, you don't go to parliament, you go to court. You file at the high court and tell his lordship that, look, my lord, this is what has happened. His lordship will look at it and then ask the lawyers for the attorney general. Then why is the General Legal Council not admitting these people? They make an argument that the court puts that that's why they have that stake they hold in court. He smashes the table and says, by court. It's an order of the high court. And people who not obey the orders of the high court will be found for contempt. Parliament, the legislative body, has nothing to do with it except to amend the law. That's all that parliament can do. Parliament can't pass a resolution and say that the General Legal Council, the Ghana Dental Authority, the GAPO have should admit people, they sack people from somewhere or there's a problem somewhere. And then Parliament passes a resolution that Minister of Transport admits everybody who was part of the demonstration in Tema who has been suspended at GAPOHA. But I mean, we've come such a long way in our constitutional democracy. We've come so far. We can't do that. Anyway, so let's, let's continue. It says, this is the resolution that Parliament passed. They passed the resolution directing the General Legal Council to proceed and admit persons who passed the exam. Let's continue. The Attorney General, himself writing, himself referring to himself, says, the Attorney General is the leader of the bar in Ghana and he must see to it that the directive... Uh, this, this is Parliament talking anyway. They are directing the Attorney General, that is the leader of the buying, and he must see to it that the directive that 499 students who scored 50 marks are admitted is complied with. We do not want to get to contempt of Parliament issues. But that's quite serious. Parliament does not write to the Attorney General. Ask him that. Leonard Attorney General, we have been informed of this matter. What is your position on the matter? I'm, I would have thought that that's what Parliament, Parliament has been doing that recently. Parliament has written to the Attorney General on the LGBT issue. There's a private member's bill before Parliament over the LGBT. Parliament has indeed written to the Attorney General. Because the Attorney General is the principal legal advisor of the state. That includes Parliament. So he's a legal advisor to Parliament. So his attention was drawn to the fact that Parliament has passed some resolution of sorts. And he looks at the resolution and says, no, 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 no. Parliament are my clients. On and off. On occasion, they are my clients. Let me write a letter to them explaining to them that this position they cannot take. And, and that's a letter that has now has censorship. Okay, let's move on. Okay. A 499 students court are admitted to comply. We do not want to get to the issues of parliament content. Almost like a threat though, but let's, know, let's go on. So the Attorney General continues. Whilst recognizing the general legislative powers of parliament in Ghana, except as have been circumscribed by the constitution, I am constrained to advise that Parliament is devoid. Now, this is the Attorney General's advice. The Attorney General, under Article 88 of the Constitution, is the principal legal advisor to the state. He exercises that authority in this letter by advising Parliament. And he says as follows, I am constrained to advise that Parliament is devoid of a power through the use of parliamentary resolutions to control the process of admission into the Ghana School of Law. He says Parliament doesn't have the power to do so. The mode of exercising legislative power enshrined in Article 106 of the Constitution does not admit of resolutions. In accordance with this, with the Section 13.1e and F of the Legal Profession Act 1960 at 32, the power to regulate admission of students to pursue course of instruction leading to qualification as lawyers and to hold examinations which may include preliminary, intermediate, and final examinations has been vested in the General Legal Council. Now let's look at that. The Attorney General, in his advice to Parliament, 
cites the law. He says that the power for, for, for the parliament, the power of uh, the, 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 the law, Acts 32. Now, what does Act 32 mean? Act 32 means that the parliament of Ghana, same parliament of Ghana, uh, sitting in 1960, passed a law. Parliament is a continuum, as you know, like government is a continuum. So the parliament of Ghana passed the law in, 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 uh, in, in 1960, Act 32. And the Parliament of Ghana, when they passed the law, did not give themselves the power to regulate examinations. They gave that power to the General Legal Council. Can you imagine the incongruous nature of what is happening right now? That the Parliament of yesteryear sat down and decided that who should we make the in charge of uh, examinations at the law school? And they decided in their wisdom at that time, the General Legal Council. Okay, let's put it in the law because that's what Article 106 says. The parliament will pass laws by bill. So let's put it in the law. So they put it in the law. And they, say, they call it Act 32. And in Act 32, they call it the Legal Profession Act. They, the parliament, passed the law and gave the power to regulate to the General Legal Council. Because that is the role of parliament legislators. They pass laws. Having given the power to the General Legal Council in 1960, in 2021, parliament seems to want to take the power back. That is an affront to the 1992 constitution. As a matter of fact, it is. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it says that uh, the power is to regulate admission of students to pursue courses of instruction leading to qualification as lawyers and to hold examinations which may include preliminary, intermediate, and final examinations has been vested in the General Legal Council. It is correct that Section 15 of Act 32 stipulates thus. And this is the same parliament that passed the law. This, they put this in the law as well. It says, the council shall, in the performance of their functions, comply with any general directions given by the minister. When parliament was passing the law in 1960, they made a determination that when we create the general legal council, should we just leave the general legal council to operate the way they want to operate? Or should we give them some supervisory sort of administrative supervisory to somebody they thought about that and then they came to this conclusion that the council shall in the performance of their functions comply with any general directions given by the minister that's what the parliament said in 1960 they gave the power to the minister to be able to give directions to the general legal council 1960 2021 parliament assumes the authority and says that admit them but it was the same parliament that, that gave the power to the General Legal Council and gave the minister the power to, to, to direct the council. They didn't put themselves in there in 1960. If they want to do so in 2021, they can. But they have to go to Article 106 to do that by the passing of a bill. A bill to amend Act 32. They know that. All the parliamentarians know that. So this evening we were surprised about this censure motion and, and all of that. <laughs> I mean, unless there's another reason for it, but the reasons they state are the reasons that we are dealing with, unless there's another reason for it, unless there's a reason that is intended to target somebody, I don't know. But unless there's another reason for it, really, this one is incongruous. Completely it is. Okay. In my respectful opinion, the Attorney General says, this provision underscores the capacity of the executive, not the legislature, through the minister responsible for the General Legal Council, i.e. the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, to direct and advise the council on major matters of national importance. The minister is concluding that from what the parliament itself passed in 1960, they are given the capacity of the executive to direct. They are given the executive capacity to direct the general legal council and not, and not, and very not, and I'm sorry about that, very not the legislature. The legislature itself passed the law to give the supervisory administrative authority over the General Legal Council to the executive by the minister. The parliament excluded itself from participating and controlling the General Legal Council or giving advice and directions to the General Legal Council. The parliament excluded itself in 1960. This is an act of parliament. I mean, this is something that political scientists and, and law students should study and come to the conclusion that no, 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 no. Parliament's resolution was ill-fated. You can't do that. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, we are bringing this back because of it. Well, after what, what I've done, I'll bring back the essential motion so you read it. And then you can make your own conclusions, ladies and gentlemen. I'll finish soon. Uh, are we running out of time? Okay, I'll finish soon. In this regard, it is pertinent to indicate that a letter dated 18th October 2021 received uh, at my office on 21st October, His Excellency the President forwarded the contents of a petition 
by the 499 candidates to me for my comments in order to enable him respond. Another petition dated 20 October 2021 by the National Association of Law Students was delivered to the president. Upon delivery of my comments on the matters raised in both petitions and following further consultation with my good self, by a letter dated 26 October 2021, three clear days before the resolution of parliament, received at my office on the 27th of October 2021, the president directed me, pursuant to section 15 of Act 32, to make the necessary intervention to the General Legal Council on behalf of the 499 student. Within the constraints of the law, I am following up on the directions of the president to make the necessary intervention. Okay, let me come back to this. What a constitutional president we have. What a constitutional president we have. So the president sits down and he receives a petition from students who are affected, which is the right thing for the students to do. Students feel that they, they have passed, they are saying they feel all sort of confusion, so they write a petition to the president. The president is the fountain of justice in Ghana. That's, that's what he is. That's the symbolism of the presidential office. He's a fountain of justice. Every Ghanaian can complain to him. So they complain to him. The president is the head of the executive, but he received the letter. And then he sits down and says, that, but this letter they've sent to me, I do not have power to, to control the general legal council, but my minister of justice has. But that's how you run a country, a country of laws, a constitutional democracy. Nearly 30 years of constitutional democracy, and we have people signing essential which is an affront to the Constitution, we shouldn't allow that. No civil society organization should allow that. Tomorrow they say you cannot arrest parliamentarians. The civil society are complaining. Lawyers are saying that no, you can arrest them. IGP says I can arrest them. You cannot arrest them. They are going to America. All of that. What is happening to the eighth parliament of the fourth republic? Are we getting concerned about the events of 7 January 2021? Parliament is parliament. Parliament is seized with authority, legislative authority. Parliament is august. Parliament is a very important institution. But parliament is circumscribed by law, limited by law. As it is that other people are limited, so is parliament limited by law. It says the president says you should make the necessary intervention to the General Legal Council on behalf of the 499 students to address the issue. Within the constraints of the law, the Attorney General says, I am following up on the directive of the president to make the necessary intervention on behalf of the students. Be that as it may, it is imperative to correct a few erroneous impressions contained in the impunct parliamentary resolution of 29th October 2021. General says, let me, let me sort of explain to you because I'm there. I'm, I'm in the position of Minister of Justice. I've been working with the General Legal Council. So I know a few more, uh, a few things more than you know. And from your letter, it looks like you don't have all the information. So let me give you the information. Okay, so he goes and says, the notice in the daily graphic of 14th May 2021 inviting applications from suitably qualified Ghanaians for admission into the Ghana School of Law did not state a pass mark of 50% or any at all as a basis for admission. So the Attorney General is telling Parliament that in any case, this is your 50% pass mark that you're talking about. You have conjured it. You have concocted it. Because where did you get it from? Can Parliament in the resolution tell us who told them the pass mark was 50%? Where did they get it from? Where did anybody get a pass mark from? The pass mark you can get from the advertisement that is put out by the graphic. For the exam. So you go to the advertisement. I tell you, I say, like, go and look at the advertisement. Who said 50% in the advertisement? Nobody said 50% in the advertisement. If previous years had been 50%, in this particular advert, there was not, no mention of a pass mark. So where did Parliament conjure the pass mark from? If Parliament had said that you should pass them according to the pass mark of last year and the year before, because this year you didn't advertise any pass mark, so you led the students to believe that it was a pass mark of last year, maybe that can be considered. But you don't pass a resolution and say, the pass mark was 50%. You are not the examiner. You didn't put out the advert. The advert didn't say 50%. You are not the general legal counsel. You could have asked the attorney general. You don't do any of these things. You are parliament and you pass the law. Boom. Admit. But wh who is going to do that? Under constitutional democracy, we can do that. Okay. Uh, it says that uh, the notices stated... The applicants may be granted admission if they have passed the entrance examination conducted by the General Legal Council. The notice also did not state the manner in which a pass mark set by the General Legal Council will be determined. It is clear, therefore, that the contention that the originally announced or advertised pass mark was 50% is erroneous and insupportable. But how can Parliament be upset with this? You pass a resolution. The whole Ghana saw the resolution. You had made an erroneous uh, 
assumption in the resolution. The state lawyer appointed under Article 88 of the Constitution, vetted by Parliament for six hours. I thought they, I, I don't know whether they forgot that. Parliament had looked at this young man for six hours and made a determination from the committee and the whole house that he was fit for purpose. That same person that you crowned as the Attorney General is telling you, giving you the legal advice that what you did was erroneous and that must, must occasion a motion of censure. I don't even get it. Your legal advisor says that you were wrong on the law. Hey, I'm going to censor you. Parliament? Well, why, why, when, since 1992, we've never seen this before. I don't even think that the motion of censure in the standing orders has ever been used by Parliament. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's ever been used. But if it has to be used, should it be used against such scholarly advice? A lawyer gives a scholarly advice to Parliament. Hey, we're going to censure you. I'll go back and look at it. Now that you've seen this, I'll show you the words they have used in the censor letter. And you'll see that it really doesn't hold water. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, number two, he says, insofar as the matter bordering on a pass mark is concerned, the notice in the daily graphic stated as follows. The attorney general just doesn't tell them that your 50% is, is conjured in your minds or for, from somewhere we don't know. He, he doesn't just say that. He proceeds to show them what the advertisement with the students saw, which is the invitation, the offer to write the exam, which is setting out the ground rules, what it actually said. Let's see it. The admission process is as follows. The General Legal Council determines the number of candidates to be admitted to the professional law course for the academic year. Okay. Applicants may be granted admission if they have passed their written examinations organized by the General Legal Council for the 2021-22 academic year on payment of the required fee and submission of the application form and all supporting documents required online. Eligible candidates who attain the minimum threshold mark set by the General Legal Council will be offered admission for the 2021-22 academic year to pursue the professional law course, unquote. That's the quotation. It says, eligible candidates who attain the minimum threshold mark set by the General Legal Council, the publication does not say what the minimum threshold mark is. It doesn't. And Parliament said it is 50%. Parliament is not setting the, the, they are not setting the exam. They are not setting the rules for the exam. They are assuming that it's 50%. Yeah, because last year was 50, we know. The year before was 50, we know. This year, the announcement came and they didn't put 50% mark there. But Parliament says, well, we have to impute it because last year it was there. And, and if you impute it and you get the raw scores and 499 people didn't pass, Mr. Attorney General, admit them. What? So tomorrow, Ghana Dental and Medical Council, some students do some small choboy as we all used to do when we come out. The choboy is nice and sweet, so we do it. So they do some small choboy. They write a petition somewhere. We are doctors, we are, we are housemen, and we wanted to do specialization. Some of us passed, then we didn't pass. Then Parliament carries resolution. Minister of Health, hey, admit them. What? Ghana, 1992 constitution is nearly 30 years old. Article 106 is there. This constitution circumscribes everyone's power. And the Attorney General is trying to help us to guide the rule of law. That's what he represents. He represents the rule of law in Ghana. An individual who is Attorney General at the same time Minister of Justice is the embodiment of the rule of law. Everything that oozes out of him must be the rule of law. He, after the President, is the next fountain of judicial justice, legal He's the leader of the bar. It's not for nothing that the Attorney General is the leader of the bar. It's not for nothing. The Parliament knows that. The courts know that. And he gives legal advice to Parliament and says, no, 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 no. This is your resolution. I'm not sure. Now, let me walk you through what happened. This is what happened. So, please, take notes. And all Parliament would have written to him is that Parliament has taken note of your so-so and so-and-so. Would you now update Parliament on what you are doing pursuant to Section 51 of Act 32? That is the most disappointing part. The General Legal Council notice was hinged on Section 13. That's actually, that's a lot of work. I mean, this is a real scholarly document. So first he says that the Parliament, that there was no 50%. He goes on to say what the council said in the daily graphic, which is a matter of public record. Anybody can check. I would have thought that by now, the members of parliament, the chief whip, and all those people would have gone for the graphic to check to be sure that what the attorney general wrote was correct. By now, they should have done that because the graphic is public record. So it's there. Okay. 
He says, the notice, now he goes on to say, the notice that was given by the General Legal Council in the graphic actually has a foundation in law. That's beautiful. The beautiful enumeration by the Attorney General. One, he says, Mr. Parliament, please, I'm sorry. There was no 50% advertised. This was the advert that was provided. After that, he says, actually, this advertisement has a basis in law. Let me show you. And he goes on to show you what the basis in law is. And it is here. The General Legal Council notice was hinged on Section 13 e and F of the Legal Profession Act 1960, Act 32, which empowered the General Legal Council to regulate admissions of students to pursue courses of instruction leading to the qualification as lawyers and to hold examinations which may include preliminary, intermediate, and final examinations. I hope that the contents thereof clarify. So really, the General Legal Council can today say, all the 799 students that were admitted, we are doing another exam for you. You fail, you will go out. And it was within the council's power to do so. So they can say that what you did was a preliminary exam. We are now going to do an intermediate one. In any case, the 799 students will not get automatic call to the bar. They will have to do another exam. Once again, conducted by the general legal council for them to be admitted to the bar. So they've written an exam to enter the school. They will write an exam in the middle. They write an exam two test points away. They will write an exam at the end. They will do a pupillage, all of it directed by the General Legal Council, pursuant to the law at 32. That's how a proper republic runs, pursuant to law. So they, they should be ready anytime. General Legal Council can come and say that, hey, come and do another exam. 799, we think that you are having problems with English language. We are going to run an exam of English literature. This is the way you prepare for an exam. Next week, Saturday, you're writing it. Those who fail, you'll be out. Or those who fail, you'll be given special attention and then that you'll do the course longer. The General Legal Council is given the power to regulate. You want to change that power? You can amend it in Parliament. Without amending it in Parliament, you cannot pass a resolution. You can't. It doesn't work. Okay. Attorney General concludes by saying, please accept the assurances of my highest consideration. He's such a gentleman, you know. A legal advisor, when he's finished writing, giving the parliament all the information that parliament should have itself had with all their libraries and uh, newspaper rooms and all the assistants that they have, 275 members, each of them has two assistants, that bulk of information, that bulk of human beings there, all of them did not have the information. The attorney general gets the information and gives it to them. He says that, take the information and have the assurance of my highest uh, consideration. And then they come and say he has been rude to them with essential. Okay, prior to the meeting, the attorney general had written to the general legal counsel as follows, put up the letter, let's do it very quickly. The Attorney General's letter to the General Legal Council, in expression of the President's directive to him to use his authority under Section 51551 of 32 to make an intervention, he had written. It says here as follows. It says, Dear Sir, I am in receipt of two letters dated October and so so and so, uh, written by His Excellency the President, Nana Dudanko Eko, for the subject matter. The letters of His Excellency alluded to separate petitions from uh, 499 students, etc. Let's run through quickly. His Excellency the President, upon an examination of the petition, has directed me to exercise my power under Section 15, it is, of the Legal Profession Act 1960 at 32 to make the necessary intervention to the General Legal Council on behalf of the 499 students to address the issue and advise that the students be admitted into the Ghana School of Law. I have examined the petition by the law students, a copy of which is attached to the letter by the president to me, and I make the following observations. The notice in the daily graphic of the 14th, he talks about it. I'm not going to show everything in this letter anyway. The notice also did not state blah, blah, blah. This is him writing to the General Legal Council. The admission process is as follows. He does all of that. He writes a letter. The eligible candidates who attain the minimum threshold mark by the General Legal Council will be offered admission. He's still quoting it. Says the General Legal Council notices seem to have been hinged on Section 13, etc., etc. And then he gives his opinion. And, and so the Attorney General has written to the General Legal Council. That's a matter of record. If you want to, we can show it. I just don't want to go through all of that tonight. Because uh, in deference to the Council, 
They have met today. Uh, they have met with their attorney. They are discussing. I don't know what they are discussing. I don't. I mean, we have this letter. I'm sure other media houses have it, but I, I don't think that it's, it should be part of the conversation tonight because we don't know what the outcome of that is going to be yet. Hopefully, by the end of the week, we will know, and then we will show this, and you will see the data, and you will see that that will show you the trajectory of the work that Attorney General has done, not just work that he's doing in the air, but work that he's doing pursuant to law. Section 1.5 of Act 32, he's been doing that work and he's been doing it assiduously and he's been working very hard day and night so that he represents justice. And then Parliament comes and says that we want to pass a censorship, essential motion on you uh, so that you'll be removed as Minister of Justice. Why? Because you have made statements. What are the statements? The statements are in the letter. The letter is so beautifully written.